All right, this is uh, the lab notebook that goes with the impulse lab with the dropping of the two different kinds of balls along the wall. Um, just like in the video, we discussed the meter stick ball scale and cardboard as our equipment. Things we are measuring are the drop height, return height, and the mass. This is my diagram. I identified the height that I dropped it at and the height that it returned to because those are the two variables, big H and little h, that I'm going to use in my calculations. My procedure masks both of the balls dropped from a certain height. You pick the drop height, you record the return height. We're going to do it several times to reduce uncertainty. Then we will do it with the other ball. Then we will put the cardboard down and um, do the two sets of drops again with the two different balls to see what the return height is. So we're investigating a few different things here. Um, the, the ball itself and how it returns. And if we change the floor, what happens to our return then? Uh, my data, I put it in a table. So we have the four different scenarios. Our drop height should be the same for all of our different trials and then our return height we're going to have four different return heights and we'll take the average return height here and then for our ping pong we'll have our four different trials our four different return heights and our average we'll put here same thing when we do the trials with the golf ball on the linoleum and on the cardboard so this will just be one drop height we want to drop it from the same height each time and this will be our average of our four trials. We'll take four trials, we have the average, so we're using our drop height h, and then our, our average return height little h in our calculations. We also need the mass, so the mass of the ping pong ball, right, this should be the same. The mass of the golf ball, this should be the same. This is all the data we need. Um, if you don't wanna make such a large table, you could just put the mass like off to the side, like we sometimes do. Uh, like this. If you want to just make a list like this, you could do it like that too. Uh, okay. Our calculations, we are going to calculate the velocity of the ball before it hits the floor using conservation of energy, or you can use a kinematic. And then we are going to calculate the velocity post-collision using conservation of energy or a kinematic, one or the other. With these, uh, with these velocities, these velocity before the collision with the floor and the velocity after the collision with the floor, we can calculate the change in momentum. But we also need our mass for this. So when we set up our conservation of energy statement, our mass will end up canceling out, right? Because it starts with gravitational potential energy and it goes to kinetic energy. When I rearrange my equation, right, my masses will cancel out and GH will be equal to one half mass uh, V squared. So when I rearrange all the way, it's gonna be the square root of two GH is equal to my velocity. This is a, also true for the velocity post collision, right? But this big H will be little h to give me my velocity post collision. And then we'll find our change in momentum for each of these, our final momentum using the velocity post collision. And then my initial momentum using the velocity before the collision. So my velocity before and after can be calculated here. And then my momentum can be calculated here. This may not be enough room or you may not want to use a chart. It's up to you. Um, how you set it up. As long as I can see your calculations where these velocity numbers are coming from, right? They should be coming from here, but I want to make sure I know that so I can check your work. When you have your change in momentums for all four of these scenarios, you're going to rank the four different scenarios based on their change in momentum. So the higher the return rate, uh, the higher the velocity will be, but we also have to take into consideration the mass, the mass of each object. So the velocity is not the only thing we're considering here.
Then we're going to rank our energies dissipated. The energy dissipated does not, the mass will not influence the energies dissipated. So for that one, you have to uh, consider it a little bit differently. And uh, only look at the initial energy and the final energy and, and what is dissipated. Uh, the difference between the two will be your energy dissipated. Lastly, we're going to sketch a velocity time graph for one of the situations. So, with your calculations, oh, I guess I <clears throat> my ball being dropped down is going to have a negative velocity because it Conventionally, our acceleration is down. Our velocity when something is moving in the southern direction is also identified as down. Something moving in the positive direction is, is moving up. So once our, when we drop our ball down, right, this velocity will be identified as negative, And then our return velocity will be identified as positive. It actually doesn't matter which you identify as negative or positive as long as you're identifying that one of these is positive and the other is negative is the biggest, uh, the, the most important thing. Also, you should be consistent. So if you're identifying this is negative, the drop height or the drop velocity is negative, you need to do that for each one of your trials so that you can have um, a true comparison. All right, so then, of course, energy is scalar, so you do not have to take the direction into consideration. So for my velocity here, this is going to be at the beginning when your time, your ball has been dropped. You'll pick some arbitrary point on your map or your graph, excuse me, and this is the time of the collision or the impact is at this time. At this time, you're going to change the direction of your velocity. So at this time, and it's going to be an instantaneous change in velocity. So you should have some step in your graph, some step in your graph. And then you, your time ending, time that your object returned to whatever height that it came to. We don't actually... Um, we're not we didn't measure the time we don't need the time this is just going to be a sketch if this is when we dropped it this is when it hit the floor and this is when it reached the return height and uh, what is going on with the velocity in between there that'll be it